Dear friends, uh, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about excessive saliva. So what we are going to cover in this uh, session, we are going to cover the background information that is related with the excessive saliva formation, the causes and the causes or the etiology of excessive saliva formation, the clinical features that are associated and the diagnosis of excessive saliva formation. At the end, we will discuss the management of the excessive salivation. So watch this lecture till the end and don't forget to give us your feedback in the comments. The excessive salivation is a very uncommon uh, pathology that is associated with the salivary gland. The excessive salivation is also referred in the literature or in the text as salivaria, hypersalivation, or tylism. So these are the terms, alternative terms, that are used to uh, discuss excessive salivation in the literature. So this problem, either it is a transient problem, or for some time, some time, or it is a chronic problem, like it is a long-term or a long-lasting problem. So what are the causes or what is the etiology of excessive saliva formation? So the etiology, it is broadly classified into two types. So either there's a hypersecretion, mean there is more production of saliva by the salivary glands, or there is a neuromuscular dysfunction, means the salivary production is normal, but the swallowing of the saliva, it is compromised due to the neuro, some neuromuscular disease. So it is demonstrated as excessive saliva, which is not the case. So neuromuscular dysfunction, uh, the hypersalivation caused by neuromuscular dysfunction is sometimes referred as false saliva or false excessive saliva production because in neuromuscular dysfunctions, the salivary production, it is normal, but it is demonstrated as excessive saliva because the swallowing mechanisms, they are impaired. Now, the excessive saliva, the, in the hypersecretion, the causes are when the patient is wearing a new intraoral prosthesis. So, and that intraoral prosthesis, it acts as a foreign body initially. And that intraoral prosthesis, new intraoral prosthesis, it causes the production of excessive saliva. It may be a complete denture, it may be a partial denture, it may be an orthodontic appliance. Infected or ulcerated lesions, they cause irritation and that irritation causes the more production of saliva. During the early pregnancy, there's also hypersecretion Teething. There are some drugs that cause um, excessive saliva production, that such as pilocarpine or clozapine. Clozapine is is a, some antidepressant. The mercury poisoning and rabies it also causes excessive saliva production. Now. Neuromuscular dysfunction, the carcinoma of the mouth metastasizes and it makes degulation or swallowing difficult. So it also causes, so even uh, the saliva production, it is normal because the swallowing reflex is impaired. So it may appear as excessive saliva. Parkinson, uh, Parkinson's disease, cerebral palsy, or other learning disabilities. It also, uh, in these conditions, the swallowing it is it is impaired, so it appears like there is excessive saliva production. Pharyngeal or esophageal obstruction, maybe a non-cancerous or a can uh, or 
obstruction caused by a cancer or neoplasia. It also causes uh, impaired swallowing and it appears like there is an excessive saliva production. What are the clinical features or what is a clinical feature of excessive saliva production? So usually there is a dribbling of saliva and this dribbling of saliva, it is either due to reduced solving reflux or a developing solving reflux. So in the developing a solving, uh, solving reflux is in children and it is very normal or the reduced solving reflux is in, in, the cancerous, in the cancer patients as we have already just discussed. Now, the diagnosis of excessive salivation, it is usually on um, the basis of history and the clinical examination of the patient. Sometimes uh, the salometry may be helpful. And the salometry, it basically, it demonstrates the saliva flow, flow per minute. Now, the management of excessive salivation. Uh, so, the management of salivation, uh, for the management, it is very important that you should know the actual cause. Like, what is the cause of excessive salivation? Because the management is according to the cause. So, here we are just going to discuss a brief outline about the management. There should be an elimination of the causative factor. For example, if it is due to a foreign body, then the foreign body should be removed. If because of um, inflammatory lesion of the oral cavity, then that inflammatory lesion should be treated. If it is because of a drug, so the alternative drug should be prescribed in consultation with the general medical practitioner or the dose can be adjusted if possible. So the elimination of the causative factor or the understanding of the causative factor, it is very important for the management. Drugs, there are drugs that are given to suppress the slivery flow and one of that drug is anticholinergic drugs. So the anticholinergic drugs, however, they are associated with more dental caries and other microbial infections as well, such as fungal infections. So these drugs have a side effects as well. So the major salivary glands can be redirected to the oropharynx through surgery, but this option is very rarely used. So if the cause is phys physiological, uh, for example, in the early uh, in the infants or in the early pregnancy. So reassurance is important. And the patient education is important uh, because sometimes the patients or their families, they are quite worried. So the patient education and the education of the families, it is also a very important part of the management that is often missed. So this is all about excessive salivation. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to give me the feedback in the comments. Thank you.